Welcome to Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner. I'm Mike Howard. Representative, thanks for coming into the studio today to talk about uh, the capital investment or bonding bill, which uh, has kind of moved all the way through the process, and uh, we've talked about it a little bit before, but we're coming to a conclusion here. Uh, yes, uh, we did pass a uh, revised bonding bill. Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, to, uh, uh, we passed that in the House and Senate, and we sent it to the, uh, the governor. And uh, he had indicated uh, about a week ago that he would sign the bill and use his line item veto authority to uh, take out stuff that he didn't like. And our experience with the governor is that he doesn't really uh, get very specific about what he doesn't like until you actually give him a bill, which is a little frustrating. But in any case, uh, he chose to uh, cut uh, more than $300 million out of the bill, out of a billion dollar bill. Uh, that would have created 21 to 27,000 jobs, and I think was it 7,000 jobs that wouldn't about right. be created now because of some of the projects that were left out. Uh, some of them weren't surprising, where he, uh, you know, he's picked out, he's mentioned a few projects that he didn't like, and and that's fine. But uh, we were a little surprised at some of the um, cuts in higher education. Uh, uh, St. Cloud State, for example, had a you know, whole science laboratory set up to help provide uh, uh, training for the students that'll be the workforce of tomorrow and helping us have these high-tech jobs and that got cut out so we're not quite sure why that uh, took place and um, there were some uh, conservation related things uh, reinvest in Minnesota land or rim land that is often used to protect habitat uh, but also to help uh, provide flood mitigation uh, uh, to help pool water essentially so it doesn't run into places like the Red River and cause flooding. And that was completely chopped out, several tens of millions of dollars. And my understanding, agencies didn't even know that that was coming. So that was a little odd. Yeah, uh, trying to pick out what's in and what's not and, and how yeah. these decisions get made, it's difficult. Let's yeah. talk about a provision of yours that oh, was in the bill. Yes. I'm glad I mentioned that to you. <laughs> no, uh, uh, there was a provision in the bill that actually was not vetoable because it wasn't an appropriation. But uh, I had a bill... Uh, partly for environmental reasons, but partly for fiscal reasons, uh, to require that all state building projects under the bonding bill uh, over $5 million have to recycle their construction waste if they're within a certain distance of a, a facility that can accept the waste. Uh, in Wisconsin, they've done this, and they've actually saved something like an average of $150 per thousand square feet in disposal costs because we don't pay tax on recycling and we pay tax on what's disposed. Uh, but it also uh, provides things like uh, shingles, waste wood, cardboard, uh, asphalt, and cement, things that all have ready end markets, particularly here in the Twin Cities metro area. So we'll actually save some several millions of dollars over the next couple of years. Well, let's talk a little bit about a piece of the bonding discussion that did get a decent amount of attention, and that's the Minnesota Sex Offender Facility yeah. uh, in Moose Lake. There's uh, a lot of confusion about that, and I don't think we've done a good job at the legislature in explaining what the hangups were about the proposed sex offender facility in Moose Lake. Uh, once a sex offender finishes his sentence, and I assume they're mostly men, they, uh, uh, they're under the jurisdiction of the Department of Corrections for their prison term. And then when they get out, there was a concern after the Drew Shadeen case that we still had dangerous sex offenders on the street. So uh, the legislature about 10 years ago created the Minnesota Sex Offender Program run by the Department of Human Services because they're not actually inmates, they're patients who have been committed civilly by a judge. And uh, uh, they're supposed to receive treatment, and I actually do know some sex offender experts from our district who say that it is possible to treat some, not everybody, and uh, we actually could um, uh, eventually have them released. But the 500 people in there have never been released, so we came up with a question on the bonding committee, why, or what's the plan? Do we have right. any plan for this? And I think that was a prudent thing to do because it costs over $300 a day for those patients to be in there. So that was the big hang-up in the bonding bill, and we're going to continue to work through that. We've got about a minute left to, to talk about bonding. Uh, and I think for folks that haven't followed the legislature for many years, this is pretty unprecedented speed to gather consensus and get a bill passed into law. Yeah, uh, uh, lobbyists and other longtime capital watchers have said that we're moving faster than they've ever seen in recent memory. Uh, uh, we'll talk at another time about the budget, but uh, on the bonding bill, usually it's near the end of session where we get consensus on that in late April, usually, early May, uh, and there's negotiation going on with the governor. Um, we wanted to get people to work in those projects that we need to do anyway with leaky roofs and state buildings and so on uh, as soon as possible in the construction season. 
and uh, uh, there's, that still will happen, but just at a smaller scale than we were hoping. Well, Representative, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. This has been Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner.